So first uh, examine one's uh, mind and then uh, uh, try to cut through the past, present, future thoughts, not to conceptualize and then uh, give rise to devotion, faith and inclination and then uh, with that uh, pure intention then carry through the uh, prayer chantings. So in this way that uh, one's uh, consciousness and body, speech, mind being completely attracted by the Guru and uh, with that uh, uh, the devotion and uh, concentrated mind then uh, one carry through the uh, prayers. So uh, with one uh, body, speech, mind and consciousness uh, having given rise to the uh, devotion and then uh, the attraction uh, towards the object of refuge and then the uh, pure perception in that way to do the prayer is important. So the devotion or the faith, if uh, uh, best is if one could uh, uh, arise naturally, but otherwise uh, one just have to train to give rise to it. So all the past, present, future Buddhas and uh, such as like Guru Pamasambhava and uh, so forth that uh, constantly uh, just uh, caring for all the sentient beings like uh, one son for a single mother. For uh, example, that uh, uh, somewhere in a water or a pond, if there is no any fish, uh, how much we try to work hard to put the net, of course we cannot get any. So similar like that, uh, all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas with their great uh, kindness and compassion uh, constantly looking and caring for all sentient beings. But uh, if uh, we don't have that uh, the devotion or faith of uh, the attraction or desire and uh, irreversible faith, then uh, one cannot really just uh, get that benefit or the blessing. So we all sentient beings uh, somehow that are uh, giving rise to desire uh, like a uh, blood uh, of ocean and then the like uh, the head uh, the afflictive emotion like a uh, so strong and hot like a mountains and then the ignorance like a completely darkness and then the jealousy like a very uh, concrete solid rocks and uh, so forth and in this way with all this afflictive emotion we all are just uh, in deep down into the muds of the samsara so as we are drowned in the uh, like uh, oceans of the afflictive emotion and uh, through that uh, as uh, all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva they are constantly 
caring for us and uh, looking for us with their great compassion. And the moment we could give rise to devotion and faith and uh, do that prayer, then there is the possibility we could be just liberated out of that on a dry, uh, nice place. So one should to examine whether oneself is really drowned in the uh, just mirth of the afflictive emotion or not. So that is why when one just really find it out then, then the someone who can just really liberate us out of that mud is the, you know, Buddha Dharma Sangha and the Guru Padma Sambhava that who is completely reliable and other than that we cannot find any other objects of refuge. <laughs> And also within this world, there are many powerful uh, gods and powerful ghosts or spirits that uh, who think they are very powerful, but still uh, that uh, somehow they were also uh, completely drawn into the uh, samsaric uh, afflictive emotions that uh, which they could not be uh, liberate. Even they think they are very powerful and uh, have uh, all sorts of strength. <laughs> So that is why uh, to be completely liberated from the suffering of uh, samsara and from these uh, afflictive emotions, then uh, the only uh, reliable object is the Buddha Dharma Sangha and then the Guru, that how one can really get all those benefits. <laughs> So even though Shakyamun Buddha has taught the uh, Dharma teaching in the nine uh, levels or the nine yanas, and then according to those uh, Dharma as we apply into practice, you know, in generally uh, other yanas as uh, like a sutra uh, that uh, which may take like uh, three countless eon lifetimes to attain enlightenment. And then also in the outer tantra that uh, even one uh, entered into the uh, tantric practices, but still it may take like 16 lifetimes or eight lifetimes. So this present practice of Dharma, what we are doing, which is known as the Tsopachimbo, the Great Perfection. And uh, as uh, one could apply into practice exactly according to the uh, teaching and instruction, then uh, there is the possibility one can be liberated uh, or attain enlightenment within three years or six years or nine years. And even worse to do worse within one lifetime that uh, one could be liberated. So in this way, this Dharma is very special and also very profound teachings. <laughs> so 
So even just to uh, meet with all these uh, precious uh, dharma uh, that also has to depend upon one's own uh, excellent uh, karma and a great deal of accumulations of merit and otherwise it is even just difficult to meet with such an uh, opportunity and so that also one just must have to apply into practice just uh, keeping it there just thinking it is something great that uh, one cannot get the actual benefit so for example like uh, if we are hungry then of course we need to eat the food you know just only looking at the food or having food it doesn't really help and if we feel cold then we must have to put the cloth on otherwise just having the cloth we cannot just you know, get the uh, protection so of course uh, the dharma teachings in the beginning something which one doesn't know one must have to understand and just have to learn and then uh, just uh, learning and understanding is not enough one must have to really uh, apply into practice you know uh, with the uh, great deal of you know effort and the practice also uh, just uh, merely doing uh, a kind of practice doesn't really help one should to you know pay full attention and very sincerely devotedly if one do the practice then one can uh, gain the benefit so somehow we all uh, that uh, our minds you know constantly arising all these kind of afflictive emotions and conceptual thoughts and then uh, even try to do kind of dharma uh, maybe it is very difficult to really have any kind of accomplishment and uh, moreover if one just have so much uh, kind of you know doubt just thinking oh these teachings are really true or not and in that way if one spent uh, time then uh, there is no any uh, benefit <laughs> Uh, till now, uh, just uh, we are wandering in the samsara, that uh, having all those kind of afflictive emotions and uh, all those uh, doubts, and that uh, we could not be liberated. So that is why uh, one must uh, develop or give rise to the devotion, inclination, and uh, sense of uh, sincerity or in, in form of respect. And then uh, having that uh, single-pointed mind, then uh, in, if one engage into practice, then one can get the benefit. So, and laying in my uh, we sentient beings of our element is somehow there are so many uh, negative or afflictive emotions. Because uh, as we do some practice in relation with the deities or just doing some prostration and also circumambulating and then uh, when something just happens and then uh, one thing or uh, all sorts of kind of uh, bad things are happening <laughs> So that, uh, you know, somehow one could not uh, see one's own fault. And then, uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, the best is one have to develop one's belief in the triple gem. So, 
so that uh, uh, because of one's own kind of uh, beginningless lifetimes obscuration and karma that uh, we could not just really see or experience the deities but uh, otherwise as I explained before that all these uh, triple gem and uh, deities are always there the moment we start the supplication prayers <laughs> So with a uh, sincere belief and uh, if we uh, supplicate to the triple gem, of course one could have a you know a positive result. Uh, it has been said in the text that uh, if one wish, uh, it is uh, possible within a week time one can attain enlightenment. Uh, it is in a way that uh, one's mind uh, being uh, not disturbed by any other uh, conceptual thoughts and uh, having a single pointed uh, mind uh, with the uh, devotion, faith and inclination and uh, if one just carry through practice days and night it is possible that one could have such kind of result. Uh, but somehow, of course, you know, we could not uh, just uh, abide even for one moment uh, without any thought, you know, just how much all these uh, emotional and conceptual thoughts are just, you know, constantly arising. So anyhow that if we develop the devotion, inclination and then the faith uh, and uh, also that having that belief to the triple gem and as one uh, do all the supplication prayer, of course one can just uh, you know, uh, purify uh, and uh, purify the obscuration and become less and then one could have that res result and receive the blessing. So, of course, uh, I'm just uh, uh, repeating many of these uh, teachings. Maybe uh, it may hurt your ear, but it is just uh, important that you have to examine your mind again and again. Uh, it is very important to really examine one's mind or the thought. Uh, if one just uh, analyze or examine the, all these uh, uh, afflictive emotion and conceptual thoughts whatsoever it is arising, then there is the possibility it will just uh, kind of get pacified. So if we don't examine or if we don't watch our mind or the thought, then of course we give rise to all sorts of different kind of, you know, uh, conceptual thought and it just wanders in that way. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, um, anyway, thank you that uh, you uh, all with the single pointed uh, devotion and faith inclination, then uh, we uh, receive these uh, four empowerments. Uh, so, then all the Talun students just stay and rest you all. Uh, can go back to your places to continue with your practice. Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah.